Hello folks, this is Sula once again. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different here. We're going to be doing another version of what I've called the Retro Gaming Corner. And what I'm going to do for you guys today is I am going to play through Super Mario Bros. 3. This is an old challenge that I've done many, many times without ever succeeding. My goal is to try to play through the entire game. That is clearing every single level, killing every Hammer Brother, and to try to do that on one life. Yes, as we get started here. That's right, one life, play until you die and see how far you can make it. We're getting started here, but I'll keep on explaining the challenge because one one's pretty easy. Anyway, I have done this many times. I have never successfully completed the game on one life. That is, again, not using any warp zones or warp whistles or anything. I can clear the game on one life pretty easily if I warp to world eight right at the start. So this game has roughly 80 or so levels. The furthest I've been able to make it on this challenge is to, I think about 7.4 or 7.5. I've never been able to make it to world eight. So I've been trying this for off and on, not too seriously, just for fun. I don't know, for I guess about 10 to 15 years now, something like that, but I've never been able to do it. Probably won't ever be able to do it, but it is fun to try just because this game is a lot of fun. I think you can still make a serious case that this is the best 2D platforming game ever made. I do remember when this game came out. I'm old enough to remember when this game released in 1990 in the US, and it was a huge deal. I can remember this was just like, I don't know, imagine uh, imagine uh, whatever the big game releases of today, your latest Call of Duty or whatever, um, you know, times like five because there were so few games that came out back then. Everybody was just like overwhelmed at the fact that this game came out and it was just so huge at the time. And keep in mind that, uh, Oh wow, I can't believe I actually got hit there. Anyway, at least there's another leaf right here. Keep in mind that most games at the time would have like maybe 8 to 12 levels, and then this game had like 80. <laughs> it was a lot bigger than most other games. Anyway, so this is one of the famous, you can get as many 1-ups as you need here in 1-2, as long as you have the raccoon tail. It's very easy to do, you just keep tapping the B button as you're descending. Is it B or A? I can't remember. Anyway, uh, let's see. Which one is it? Um, it's the A button. You keep tapping the A button as you're um, as you're falling down. So anyway, that's easy to do. I don't just I usually just grab like two one ups there, just to show that I can still do it. And this game is full of secrets too. That right there is one of the little secret areas. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to um, hit this block here, the P block that turns coins into gold and gold into co not gold into gold into coins. That turns coins into blocks and blocks into coins. You're supposed to hit that P block and then you're supposed to climb up on the coins but if you have the raccoon tail you can just fly up there so that's what I normally do. Now there's a star in this note block and the star is of course fun in this game because it makes you flip when you jump. Notice I always I always love that animation and let's see if we can get another star. Yes. So course clear you got a card. Hopefully this will be the first of many stars. If you get three three of the same at the end of the level, you get extra one-ups. If you get three that don't match, you get one extra life. We'll see if I can do that here. So anyway, on to 1-3. This is a fun level too. The designers have it all set up. You kick the turtle shell, make your way through, and yeah, there is a raccoon tail in there. There's a 10 coin block here. Let's go ahead and grab that while we're there. Not that the coins mean that much. And then there's the hidden, uh, what is that, golden or it's like a pink note block that catapults you up here to coin heaven. There's not too many of these in Mario 3. There's one in this level. There's one in 1-5, I think. I think it's 1-5. And then there's another one in World 3 in one of the levels. It's kind of like this. Oh, by the way, there is a hidden one up up here. Most people probably know that. So you want to hopefully uh, you have the raccoon tail if you come up here. Oh, here, watch. If you, if you use the raccoon tail and time it just right, you hit that Goomba when you come out of the pipe. I always thought that that was fun. That showed, that's, that's a little sign that I may have played this game a couple times over the years. <laughs> anyway, so this is one of the more famous things. You hit down on the white block and you go in the background. But did you know you can do it while holding a turtle shell too? Yep. And now you take the turtle shell along with you. And there is the background. So this is pretty well known, I think. I think everybody knows this, that if you run into the background there, you get the whistle. I'm not going to use the whistle. I'm just going to go ahead and pick it up because... I happen to be here. And now it's time to see if we can get something good in the Toad House. Again, I'm playing through this game on one life, but I absolutely am going to make use of the Toad Houses. That's an unlucky result, getting a mushroom. In the in, Here in World 1, you can get mushroom 
fl fire flower or raccoon tail in the toad houses. And mushroom's the worst result, obviously, out of the three of them. Uh, raccoon tail is definitely the best since you can get the fire flowers from the little card game, but you can't get the raccoon leaves uh, anywhere except the toad houses. There's a one up in here. We'll just grab that. I should mention that this level, this is the first level with automatic scrolling, the auto scrolling, that is the screen keeps moving along regardless of what you do. This is the first level in the game that has that. There are a lot of other levels like this. There's a raccoon tail in here. There's also a one up in this block right here. Oh, well, I killed the turtle, I kicked it too close. But I can get it with the raccoon tail. Anyway, uh, in this level, if you get all the coins, or very close to all the coins, you get a white mushroom house. Let's see if I can do that. I just need to hit this block about six or seven times. That should be enough. Should be enough. Uh, the, the tricky part back there is getting all the coins on the little log that falls down, and then hitting that ten coin block. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a star here, though. Uh, one and three, no. Did not get the star. Well, we should see that plenty of times anyway. So you only get one extra life for the three cards. If they match, you get more. And there's the White Mushroom House. So again, the way that you get the White Mushroom House to appear, it's certain levels in each world. You have to get a set amount of coins in that level. And usually there's levels with auto-scrolling or extra dangerous worlds. The White Mushroom House gives you a P-Wing in odd-numbered worlds, and they give you a, an anchor in even-numbered worlds. The anchor is pretty useless in this game, but the, the P-Wings are quite good. I may have the opportunity to use them later if I get far enough in the game. They're kind of cheap because you kind of skip the level when you use them, but um, they are very helpful in some of the tough levels. All right, so this is the first uh, first fortress. The fortresses are like the scary slash spooky background. Wow, I almost got hit by that floating um, donut thing. Anyway, this is where the second whistle is. I think everybody knows this too. There we go. Can fly up there. So anyway. I will go ahead and grab that, even though I'm not planning on using it. And now I'm going to clear the first Hammer Brother. Pretty easy to kill. Note that you can get pick up a Fire Flower there, and you can fly while ducking. I don't know if many people know that either. I enjoy doing the fly while ducking. So you can sometimes get a power up in the little Hammer Brother stages. Now here in World 1, they're really easy to kill, but in later stages, they can be a lot trickier, the Hammer Brothers. But uh, my goal is to clear them all, in addition to the stages. Anyway, here's the other Coin Heaven. Remember I said it was in 1.5? One of the things that's nice about Mario 3 is you do go through the levels pretty quickly. The levels aren't that long, so you can just kind of power your way through them. So this is exactly the same as the one in, in World 1-3. Extra life up here, extra coins. Oh, I missed two of them on that left side. Oh well. It's almost impossible to get every single coin in here. I, I think I've seen it done before, but it's very tricky to do. You, you just get like 90%, that's pretty good. Anyway, there's a... Wow, the turtle shell's still down there. That's pretty funny. There is a fire flower in that question mark block, but I'd rather have the raccoon tail for the moment. Raccoon tail's more useful here in World 1. I always liked that this level was had like the ice background. This particular level, it's just kind of randomly has the ice background. When they remade this level for Super Mario Bros. All-Stars on uh, SNES, they gave it like a cave background, and I never liked that cave background as much. I kind of like the ice background. Anyway, let's see what card... Yeah. By the way, if you run, if you max out the P meter down at the bottom, and you run, and you hit the bottom left corner, it usually gives you a star every time. And now I've got the card game, the little end card game. Flip over any two cards and see if they match. You can only miss twice. So this is like a memory game. Um, okay, that wasn't right. I should be able to get the stars. The stars are almost always on the right corner, see? The fire flower... No. Okay. Well, we'll see how well I remember that when I get that again. Anyway, what triggers the card game? It's something kind of random. It is when you get every 80,000 points, you get uh, the card game appears. So I went over 80,000 points in the last level. See how I'm at 91k right now? That's what triggered the card game. Yeah, it's really random, but that's what does it. Anyway, there is a 1-up in here. It's in that block. Little note as well, in Mario 3, the mushrooms will go the opposite of whatever side you hit the block on. This is a 10-coin block here. I'm actually not doing that great of a job of hitting it. The mushrooms go the opposite direction of the corner. Ah, I missed it. I'm going to try to fly here. The, the mushrooms go in the opposite of whatever little corner you hit the block on. So I got that one to go to the left by hitting it on the right side. So here you can fly and you can grab these coins. It's a little tricky to do, but extra coins are always good. And should be able to get a star here. Yes. Okay. 
So I should be able to get three stars the next time. And that's pretty much it for World 1. We just have to grab the Mushroom Houses. I am avoiding the little spade thing you might see on the map. That's a place where you can try to... Oh, nice. Raccoon Tail. The leaf, that's what we want. That's the best result. See the little spade thing up there? That is a place where you can play another mini game to get extra lives, but um, I'm only playing this game on one life anyway, so I'm not going to waste time doing that. Anyway, it's terrible. The king has been transformed. Please find the magic wand so we can change him back. So this is the first airship. Castle at the end of each world. You then have to go to the airship, fight the, uh, go through these auto-scrolling ones. All the airships are auto-scrolling levels. These early ones are pretty easy, but Again, some of the later ones, uh, the, the World 6 and the World 7 airships are very difficult. I have, don't know if I'll make it there, but we will see. Never made it to the World, si air, uh, World 7 airship on one life. Anyway, this one's pretty easy. It's got a lot of cannons to shoot at you. There's the only power-up in the level, Fire Flower. I'm going to stick with the Raccoon Tail so far. I'd rather have that. Anyway, there's a lot of cannonballs. And at the end, there's a Koopa Kid boss. The one in World 1 is, I believe, Larry Koopa, I think is his name. He's fairly easy to beat there we go so that's that's a pretty simple level but it is world one now to beat these guys jump on their head three times before you get killed yeah oh no nope. you see he hit me so i screwed that up but still pretty easy to beat uh what they will do in later levels is they'll mess with the floor they'll make the floor really uneven and some of the other koopa kids will throw projectiles at you and a couple of the ones shake the ground when they jump which uh, freezes you in place if you're on the ground when they jump. So they do little stuff to make it a little bit more complicated. But that first one's pretty easy to beat. Anyway, so this is the first king. He's got his wand back. He's been transformed back. Oh, thank heavens. I'm back to my old self again. Thank you so much. Here is a letter from the princess. They all say exactly the same thing. So you get used to it after a while. Greetings. If you see any ghosts, be careful. They will give chase if you turn away. I've enclosed a jewel that helps protect you. Princess Toadstool. This is before they called her Princess Peach, which they changed in uh, 1996 when the N64 came out. Anyway, at the start of this level, there's a little fun thing you can do. Kill all these guys, all the little guys that jump out of the blocks. And there is a raccoon tail in here. So anyway, right back to raccoon tail. On to World 2. This is the desert world. This, level's pr this world's pretty easy as well. Uh, world 3 is where it starts getting difficult. And there is a um, what is it, a star in there. There's also a raccoon tail on that block. And, oh, just got that guy. There's another little secret area here. You can fly up in the air in this pipe. And there's a coin switch in here. PP switch reveals coins. These little ghostly looking silver coins. It also turns all blocks into coins and coins into blocks. So right there, we can get one. And here, yep, see that they were coins. They turned into blocks. So they, there's some interesting little puzzles with that. Anyway, those little fire chain guys, they can't be killed by anything except a raccoon tail. I, I, that, wait, that's not true. I think they can be killed with a hammer suit's hammer, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but raccoon's tail is the safest way to take them out. Obviously, you can't fireball them. There's another one up in there. There's a leaf in that block on the left. See? So, another little power-up. And uh, the problem with the little fire chain guys is they come back. I killed that guy, but he's already back again. Anyway, here there's another little secret down this pipe on the right. Once we go down here, there's another switch, and that will turn the blocks above to coins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What is it? Eight coins there? You can actually keep doing that over and over again. Ah. Well, I screwed that up. I wanted the star. You can keep getting those eight coins at the end of the level over and over and over again if you want, but it's kind of a waste of time. Anyway, on to world uh, level 2-2. Two, two. This is the White Mushroom House level here, in this world. There's a leaf in that block. I guess I'll leave it in case I need it later. Uh, if you get all the coins in this level, you get a White Mushroom House, you get the anchor. Let's see if I can do that. This one's a little trickier to pull off. There's a one up in there. Now what you have to do is see that P-switch. You have to hit the block, and then I, now I have to go back and uh, jump on that platform, that the moving platform here, this log, so it comes back. Okay. Now what I need to do is let this go ahead, wait for a second, then hit the switch, and now jump on it, and okay. There we go. Now there's four coins here at the end. Oh, I fell off. Never mind. Uh, 
Okay, I'm not I'm not gonna get the anchor. You have to grab those last four coins. You have to get at least two of them. Um, I would have gotten them if I hadn't fallen off the platform, but oh well. Sorry, uh, didn't get the anchor there. What? Flower? That should have been a star. Well, I guess eventually I'll get it. Anyway, on to the fortress. Some of the later worlds have more than one fortress, but here in World 2 there's only one fortress again. By the way, you can get uh, infinite one-ups there too. Here are these, these dry bones that come back to life after you stomp on them. Back where there's three of them, if you're careful about how you do it, you can get infinite one-ups there with a raccoon tail as well. But I'm not going to be troubled. This level is the first time you see some of the enemies that became staples in later Mario games. The Thwomps and the Boos, which are like iconic Mario Brothers enemies now, but this is the first time that you see them in uh, here in Mario 3. And here you can go ahead and fly. But uh, the idea of what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to run over the, underneath the spikes there and then go over the spikes here. Have to be a little careful. Well, that wasn't too good. Yeah, I, was, I shouldn't have gotten hit there. Anyway, and these are the bosses of the fortresses. You didn't see that one in World 1. They're called Thwomps. Or no, 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 that's not right. They're not called Thwomps. They're called Boom Booms. Something may have been lost in the translation from Japanese there. But yeah, there's, I believe they're called Boom Booms. Anyway, uh, they're another, like most everything else in Mario, you, you hit them on the head and they die. Okay, where was that mushroom the first time? Yes! Oh, the one up, I have no idea where this is. Another star. Oh, well, that's easy. Okay, wait. Now I have no idea. Okay, well, making a little progress there. I've got a million of those stars in my inventory. I'll probably have to waste some of them later just to clear out inventory space. All right. Let's hope for uh, another leaf here. No, fire flower. That's not bad. Better than a mushroom. So the way that your inventory works is you can use them between levels. And of course, that would give me Fire Mario. That pipe is a little shortcut through. All right, on to 3-3. This level's really fun if you go into it uh, at least big, like I am right now. You can get a, a raccoon tail right away. And the raccoon tail lets you do some really fun stuff later in this level. Uh, you actually can do this level going in as small Mario, but uh, you have to use the um, turtle shells to break open the blocks in order to get the power-ups, and that's a little tricky to do. Anyway, so let's go ahead and try to kill some of these enemies while we had... Well, I was going to kill the enemies, but the star is already worn out. So and there's another power-up, another leaf here. Maybe I should have saved that in case I got hit. Oh, well. So right here, you can fly. Watch this. We're going to take off, and right up here in the sky, there is a P-switch. And let, looky what's down here. Oh, a lot of blocks. One of them's a 1-up. We'll just grab that. All of these are blocks that get turned into coins. And yes, that is a lot of fun to do that. <laughs> so this level becomes much more entertaining if you go up there and grab the P-switch. This is a little interesting way to end the level. You have to get into that pipe down there, and the only way to do that is to kick the turtle shell. But the designers have again set it up, so the turtle shell will clean this stuff out. All these blocks that you see, all the ones on the outside, are actually coin blocks. So let's see if we can reveal some of these. I'm going to try to tail these as I... No, nope, I missed most of them. Oh well. It's not worth trying to fly up there. That block down there, to the left of the pipe, that one is a 10 coin block, but it's not worth it to maybe getting hit just to go after that. Oh well, not going to line up the cards on this uh, this particular run through the levels either. Now on to the hardest level in World 2, the quicksand level. When I was a kid, this gave us the worst nightmares trying to do this level. It's actually not that difficult. Uh, this level is famous for the angry sun. See him up there in the left corner? Well first you have to run and jump over the tornado, that's not too tricky to do. But now the angry sun attacks you and he is angry! I believe his official name actually is the Angry Sun. But what most people don't know is you can kill the Angry Sun. Uh, if you kick a turtle shell off of these blocks and it hits him, he will die. He comes back, but he will die. Let's see if we can do this. I'm very angry too. Yes! Yes! No more Angry Sun! Take that! Uh, yeah, that's the only way you can kill him. Turtle shell. But that's it. He will come back eventually if he waits too long. But yeah, take that Angry Sun. So, clear way through the course. Again, I can't overemphasize how hard that was when I was, like, 10 years old playing this game. Let's see. Let's get rid of some of these stars on the Hammer Brothers. Note that the Hammer Brothers are uh, Boomerang Brothers here in World 2. 
That gives us the music music box. I don't know if that's the official name or not. Wow, <laughs> Mario got stuck mid-animation. The music box puts the Hammer Brothers to sleep. It's another item that's not very useful because I'm intending to clear out all the Hammer Brothers, trying to kill them all. Oh, that was the worst result. So two mushrooms already from Toad Houses. Anyway, the music box will put them to sleep. Usually it's the kind of item that you just want to waste to get out of the way. Anyway, 2-4. This is a really fun level if you start with the raccoon tail. Because it allows you to do this. Instead of going to the right, you go to the left, fly up here, break all these bricks. And now you get into the fun, lots of coin, easy part of the level. There is a P block down here. It's the third one on the right. There it is. So you want to not break any of these blocks. Turn them into coins. Boom. Go ahead and grab these. It's actually much faster to jump on top of the water like this than to try to swim. And back to coins again. So, this is just a fun little area. Not a lot of enemies, just lots of coins. So it's kind of a secret area. And then watch this. This is one of my favorite things to do in all of Mario 3. Take off and fly and get all the coins while flying. That's just a lot of fun. Anyway, there's these two guys here. More points for jumping on their heads. we got to get back to that card game, don't you know? Um, but the, the problem is the turtles will come back again. See, he's already back again. Oh, well. Kick him out of the way. As you might guess, there's another P-switch here. It's on the right. It's on this block here. And now we can turn the blocks into coins. And the coins into blocks. Make sure to pick them all up. And just want to get these ones up top after they turn back again. So yes, Mario is very greedy to get all of the coins. There's a leaf in here. There's also a few more coins. I could keep going back to the left, but uh, I don't really want, really want to do the whole level since I already bypassed most of it. And let's kill this guy just for fun. And now there's another one here right at the end. Oh, wow, he actually hit me. That was sloppy. I should have just jumped over him. But I can get the raccoon tail back again in the next level, so that's not that big a deal. There's a raccoon tail right at the start here on 2-5. There's a raccoon tail in those blocks. Can I get it without getting hit? Yes. I believe this is the first time that the Chain Chomps are introduced in Super Mario Bros. as well. They weren't in Mario... Yeah, this is the first time we see them. By the way, if you stand per if you stand still and wait for like 160 seconds, they will uh, break free of their chain and come after you. That's not just an urban legend. It really does happen in this game. But you have to stand there for... Like I said, it's almost 200 seconds on the clock. But they will actually break free of their chains and come after you. Not going to do that on this playthrough, though. It's just waste way too much time. Maybe if I use the speed up function on this emulator, but not going to do that. Anyway, another level, another secret area. There's a P-switch here. A lot of P-switches in this game. There's also a leaf. Going to have to break one more block, I think, to get this. And now, let's see, can I do the jump? Yes. Let's see if I can get all of these. Having that one extra block does help. And got it. Before the time ran out. And there's a leaf in here as well, on the right. Go up there and grab that. It almost fell. If you, By the way, if you... Um, well, let's get this first. Oh, I got the mushroom. Nice. If you hit the corner just so, you can often get a mushroom. Maybe I'll be able to get three mushrooms. And there's the card game. I don't know what the N stands for. I've never figured that out. Oh, wait, wait. We saw the one up before. Yes, there it is. I remember. Um, I saw this before too, but I don't remember where it is. I saw that mushroom. 20. Oh, okay. Well, that's lucky. Um, I saw that flower somewhere. Yes. Almost there now. Um, I don't think I've seen this other flower. Oh, wow. Wait, I just saw that. Oh, that was stupid. I just saw that 10 coin. Oh, well, we're getting close to the end. And I filled up how many inventory slots? Two, two full rows of inventory slots. I'm going to have to get rid of some of those items later. Anyway, we'll kill this guy the normal way just to show that I can. And we get the hammer here. Hammer opens up the passageway. You can use that hammer to get the third whistle beyond that block to the right. Right here. You can use it to smash that block and go get the third whistle right there. I'll just go on to the next level now. I don't, I've actually got enough uh, stuff in my inventory already without needing to grab another whistle I'm not going to use. <laughs> anyway, so this level is the pyramid. 
Uh, the inside doesn't look like anything I would expect the interior of a pyramid to look like, but it's kind of neat. You have to be able to clear out these vertical rows of blocks, these vertical rows of bricks. It's a little bit easier with a raccoon tail. Oh, and here's another another little secret area. There's a lot of secret areas in Super Mario Bros. 3 if you haven't figured it out already. I'm going to break up one brick on each side in order to get up here, clear the coins. There's a one up here too, right there. Perfectly timed. And here's the P-Switch. Let's get the rest of these. I can, yes, I did get in there without breaking the block. Did you see that? If you duck and jump, you can get in there without breaking the without breaking the brick. A little tricky to do, but it can be done. And from here on out, we go on to the end. By the way, the buzzy beetles on the ceiling. Oh, well, I screwed that up. Now I need to use this guy to break the uh, blocks here on the right. Let that guy, get, oh, well, that's not what I wanted to have happen. I need one of these guys to come back now. I need one of those guys to break the wall. All right, there we go. So you need this guy to break this and then duck underneath and we're good. Leaves behind a little white trail in that spacey type background. Okay, just gotta kill the hammer brother and try to get a mushroom here. Come on, give me a mushroom, give me a mushroom. No, no, now I get the star. Well, at some point I'm going to get the stars. <laughs> anyway, should I use something here? Hmm. Let's use a flower. Just go in at full health. This king's been turned into a spider, it looks like. An 8-bit spider, of course. It's terrible. The king has been transformed. Please find the magic wand so we can change him back. It's amazing that you guys are having the exact same problem as the last world we just went through. Hmm. This airship, a little bit more difficult, still not too tricky. For some reason, the wood on this airship is green. <laughs> Interesting choice of palette here. Like I said, this one's not too tricky, but there are a few more cannons to deal with, and a few more of the bullet bills. What? I don't understand how I got hit there. Oh well. Glad I started with firepower instead of just being normal Mario. All right, here, just a few jumps. I can get firepower back again here. Now you can fireball the Koopa Kids at the end, but you have to hit them with a lot of fireballs. Like, you have to hit them a lot of times, so usually it's easier just to hit them on the head three times. Here we can just chill on top of the boxes. You want to move up there quickly before those cannons start firing at you. Oh my god, I can't believe that hit me. These guys keep popping up over and over again. If you have the Raccoon Tail, you can, use, you can try to get uh, infinite one-ups off of them. Not that you have a lot of time to do it, but you can try. All right, so let's do this one. This one is Morton Koopa, I believe. I can't get hit too many times here. Oh my god. Okay, this is this is scary time. Yes! Wow, that his magic wand almost hit me there at the end. Little man saves the day. Wee man to the rescue. <laughs> that was a lot closer than I wanted it to be. I would have been very sad if I had died to the Koopa Kid there at the end of World 2. But, on with the show. On we go. This king's got a pretty impressive mustache there. He looks like a, an American Civil War general from the 1860s. I thank heavens I'm back to my old self again. And amazingly, here's yet another letter from the princess. She must have written quite a few of these. You can stomp on your enemies using Goomba's shoe. I've enclosed a jewel that helps protect you, Princess Toadstool. She gives you a Karibos cloud. Let's use a mushroom here. Why a mushroom? Because that way, when I get a power up right here on the left, it will be a fire flower as opposed to being a mushroom. And fire power is what you want underwater. Can't really do anything with the raccoon tail underwater, but Fire Mario can shoot fireballs underwater, so it's much better. Anyway. Uh, what was I going to say? Ah, yes. World 3. On to World 3. World 3 is where Mario 3 starts getting difficult for the first time. It's like this stupid blooper finally died. There's another one over here. So there we go. Wow, those dead bodies fall a long way. Um, <laughs> this area, this first level is not too tricky, but some of the later ones get a lot harder. As far as those uh, flower things that shoot the little fire blossoms at you, can't be killed by fireballs, see? I can't remember if the Hammer Brother hammer kills them or not. The hammer suit kills them. I, I don't know if it does. There's a little hidden fire flower in there. 
Watch this, we can kill this blooper right there. Bounce it right off the ground, then it goes and hits him. Learned that a long time ago. Anyway, so this world starts to get more tricky. The, the water levels are, are a little bit harder to deal with. And there are some enemies that can one-hit kill you. Watch this. Off the wall, back to Mario. So the game definitely increases the difficulty a little bit. That guy, I knew that he was there. Just hit him with a fireball as you go past. Alright, got a star. Let's get three stars this time. Gonna do it on this time. Alright, so Underworld 2. 3-2 is a bit of an interesting world. If you uh, are able to do it correctly, you can get a star almost all the way through. Kind of wish that was a raccoon tail. These uh, little cheap cheeps at the bottom just keep coming forever. Watch this. So there's a star in here. And if you go through the level correctly, you'll get uh, more stars from these blocks. See, that's a star. If you're not invincible when you hit it, it's just a coin. But if you're invincible, you get another star. And this is the same way. Another star. Oh, wow. The music's glitched. The music's glitched. There's no star music, even though I'm invincible. Sweet. Anyway, so <laughs> one last flipping jump. Those flipping jumps are awesome. All right, there we go. Down the pipe. Uh, this level's a lot harder if you aren't able to keep the star all the way through. And come on! Yes! Got the star. Just one more now. 3-3 three, three is where they start introducing the guys that can swallow you in one bite. Let's go to this Toad House first. This Toad House has a frog suit in all three boxes, so it doesn't matter which one you open. See? Got a frog suit. Frog suits are great in the water levels. They're terrible anywhere else. 3-3 three, three is... Well, it's got uh, this guy, the guy who eats you. That guy right there. He eats you. If he eats you, you're just dead. It's a one-hit kill. And you can kill him with fireballs, but he does come back. Watch, he comes back in, I think, like five seconds. So he never goes away for long. And the water goes up and down in this level, too. Let's try to kill him. Oh, wow, that was way too close. Remember, we, we've only got one life for this challenge. As soon as I die, it is over. The only safe way to proceed is to clear the guy out ahead of time, but at least they do give you a lot of opportunities to get uh, firepower. Wow. Slow down. 8-bit goodness. Here though, they give you a little bit of a reprieve. I would like to kill this guy first. Yes. Alright, so what they want you to do is run across on the blocks. These are actually all coins. You can come back and get these, but it's very unsafe claiming these coins. Watch, I'll stay here and demonstrate. As soon as that, uh, as soon as that P-switch goes out, now all of a sudden you gotta cross this terrain. And it's like, oh my god, I've got to swim through here with the guy that eats me in one go. All right, we got to go right now. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, got it. There, uh, There is actually a one-up to the right there. If you can keep going to the right and get another one-up, but it's not worth it. Come on, star! Yes! Star! You got a card. That's worth five one-ups. Not that I need these. All these one-ups are completely pointless. <laughs> But it's fun to get the star anyway. Let's see if I can get to 99 one ups before 99 extra lives before I die. Okay. Only two possible choices and I still managed to screw it up. But I can't screw this up. Yay! Cleared the cleared the card game. Sweet. Uh it comes back again after you get another 80,000. And there's a different board. There's oh wow. I can't believe I got hit by that. That was sloppy. I think that there's like 10 different uh, boards on the card game. So it, it changes depending on which board you've got. So you can't just uh, memorize one pattern. There's a couple different ones. Anyway, this fortress is set up to be a maze. Uh, there's all these different doors and it's supposed to confuse you as to which one you're supposed to go through. But um, I've played this game enough that I know which ones to go through. It's actually door number six. I'm going to skip that for now because door number nine, the last one, has some free coins in it. And I want to show you guys as many of these secret areas as possible. So, all coins in here. Another one up that we don't need. And now it's time to go back to door number six. That's door number seven, so it's right past this thwomp. And this is the right one. Otherwise, you can spend a lot of time... Oh, I actually went through it twice. Uh, otherwise, you can spend a lot of time wandering around in here. But just remember, it's, it's door number six is the one you're supposed to go through. And now here's the boss at the end. Jump on his head three times. One of his forms was a flying form. You might have noticed that he had little wings one time. The guy will fly around up in the air in some of his forms, but the best way to avoid that is just kill him really quickly. Um, just considering using a star there, I guess I'm just going to play this straight. So now there's two Hammer Brothers as opposed to one. Not too tricky, but not a gimme either. You got another Hammer now. 
Here in World 3, you can use the hammer to open up the canoe and sort of surf around a little bit. Maybe I'll show that. I can't remember. All right, so World 3-4 or 3-5? Which one to go to? I uh, want to go to 3-5 because 3-4 is a little bit trickier unless I can find a way to get a raccoon tail, if I remember correctly. There's a fire flower in here. Oh, almost got hit by that guy on the rebound. And now I've got to try to kill this blooper. Come on, come on, come on. Kill this guy. Got him. <laughs> the little jellyfish, they don't move, and you can't hurt them. In fact, I think they might just be part of the background, but if you touch them, you, you take a hit. Then, as far as I know, there's absolutely no way to kill those guys. Hammer suit won't do it. Tanuki suit won't do it. They're just, they're just part of the landscape. You can't do anything except avoid them. Anyway, this isn't too bad as water levels go. You pretty much just stay at the bottom. Wow, I can't believe I got hit by that. That was really sloppy, but fire flowers right here again. There are a lot of power-ups in this game. It's one of the nice things. Of course, there's a lot of bottomless pits, too. Now, there's a one-up in here. Watch this. One-up, off the jellyfish, back to me. That's the best way to get that one-up. Now, how to kill this guy. There we go. Just bait him towards me. Wait for it, wait for it, and then finish him off with a fireball. Those uh, those big guys there will spit out little fish from their mouths. I can't remember what those guys are called in this game. Wow, it's been a while. I should definitely remember what they're called. But it's escaping me at the moment. The guys with the big mouths. I honestly can't think of what they're called. The fish are cheap cheeps, but I can't remember what the bigger guys are. All right, anyway, um, this is a good time to do this, Hammer Brothers. We've got the fire suit. Oh, wow, that was sloppy. Oh my god. Okay, now we really gotta be careful. Wow, this is way too dangerous. Oh, get up there! Get up there! Yes! Wow, I took that way too lightly. Should've used that star. Should've used one of those many stars I have. Oh boy, that was not good. Um, I'm gonna... What should I use here? Um, I think I'm gonna use my raccoon tail, yeah. I wanna use it for this... Oh, I got confused. I thought... I thought that this was the level with uh, the platforms in it. Never mind. I could have just used a mushroom here and I would have been fine. I could have used a mushroom here and then this is a raccoon tail. See, I could have used a mushroom and then I would have gotten the raccoon tail there. So that was a wasted item. Or at least not as efficient as it could have been. Oh, by the way, you can slide down these hills. I don't know why they put that in the game, but it is fun. Anyway, we want to try to make it through this level without getting hit. It's important to make it through this level without getting hit, if possible, because the next level is a platforming level, and Raccoon Tail is really good in that level. And I just used up my raccoon, my leaf items, so I can't use it here. This guy, this plant is like the most irritating plant ever. we got to try to kill him. Watch. There we go. All right, that makes this little area so much easier without him shooting at me. Okay. There's a P, there's a P switch right there on the right. And it causes coins to appear. So now that we don't have someone shooting at us, let's go ahead and grab that. Should be able to get all the coins, I think. Again, this is much harder with a guy shooting at you. Come on. Nope. Nope. I missed the last two. Not that it matters, but I did miss them. Now, Lakitu appears here at the end. The guy who is in the cloud and who throws, turtle shell, throws little spiky eggs at you. Wow. That was a pretty good dodge. So we're just going to try to get to the end as quickly as possible. He turns into a coin when I hit the block. There is another 1-up back there in that little row of blocks that I kind of bypassed. There's a 1-up back there, but I didn't want to take a hit, so I just ran past it. I think I've got enough extra lives. I don't really need a 39th extra life. And another frog suit. That's not that useful. Uh, even though the frog suit's pretty funny, I don't find it that useful. I'd usually rather just have firepower in the underwater levels. Sure, you can swim really well if you're Frog Mario, but the problem is... You can't shoot fireballs, so you're actually kind of defenseless. Anyway, this level is tricky. You can see it's a platforming level. These little blocks will fall if you stand on them. They're called donut lifts in this game. So it's a platforming level with a lot of bottomless pits, and there are no raccoon tails in this level. All the power-ups in this level are fire flowers, so you have to bring a raccoon tail into this level if you want to use it. That's why I said it was important not to get hit in that last level, so I can use Raccoon Tail. These jumps, I mean, you can do these jumps without having the tail, but it's just so much easier when you can glide into all of these, into all of these little jumps. By the way, I wonder how these, these logs just like float in midair. I guess you shouldn't question video game logic, but whatever. So there's a mushroom there, 
Gonna go ahead and grab it. By the way, you can fall through there. See the little hole in the bottom? I have died by falling in there, just like the turtle did a minute ago. You can die there pretty easily. <laughs> Alright, this is a little tricky. We've got to wait until the thing spins around. There we go. And then float softly down onto the pipe. Again, can do it. Can certainly do it without the raccoon tail, but it's a lot more difficult. And then just a little way to go. And we get the star again. Starman says hello. So that's another five up. The mushroom, if you get three mushrooms, it's worth two. If you get three fire flowers, it's worth three lives. And the star is worth five. Now there's a leaf in here, by the way. Go ahead and pick that up. Not that I need it. This is a weird level. It's full of these guys called Spike, who throws spike balls at you. But it it's th this feels like a very Japanese level to me because it's just it's just a weird, weird level between the enemies that like oh, vomit up this ball that comes and hits you and some of the other stuff later in this level. This is the other level that has a little coin heaven area in it. So I'll see if I can open that up and let everybody take a look at it. Anyway, there is a vine up here. Which one is it in? That block. Yes, there's a vine here. Let's go ahead and grab that. Now you might have noticed there was a big group of blocks back there on the left that I skipped over before. Well, anytime you see a bunch of blocks in Super Mario 3, that means there's a P-Switch somewhere. So here's the P-Switch. Fall down here, and now they're all coins. One of them's a one-up in here, too. That, the one brick that didn't disappear. That one. Why does it go to the left? Because I hit it on the right side. This is the only Mario game that, that, that it works that way. In Super Mario World, the mushrooms always go to the right no matter what. But in this game, you can get them to go to the left if you hit them on the correct side. Anyway, here's the secret area right there. So back to Coin Heaven. But this one's different than the first two Coin Heavens. Uh, there's nothing up in the sky to fly. If you try to fly up top, the screen doesn't scroll. Just these coins here. Watch, I can demonstrate. See? Screen doesn't scroll. Nothing. It, there's just nothing up there. And then at the end, you get... a. Uh, one of the clouds and uh, that's it that's just the end of the level now one of the what the cloud does is let you skip a level but again that's not really useful for this challenge because I'm playing every level so the clouds kind of useless I'll probably just get it deleted out of my inventory when I get low on space all right so this is the second fortress again world 3 is the first world with two fortresses in it I don't know how uh, this fortress is flooded with water or whatever but it is and in this fortress, it's better to have the Fire Flower. I'd like to bounce it off that block and kill him, but oh well. Basically, just it's an underwater level. The Raccoon Tail is pretty much useless. Much better just to switch over to the Fire Flower. And these weird ghosts that go back and forth on the blocks, it's a strange obstacle. The best way, they want you to go through the middle there, but you don't have to. The best way is to do what I did and just go down onto the bottom. You can skip it. And then here you have to go through the middle, but you've got way more room. Just wait for them to go down, see? And it's pretty easy to get past. Just take your time. There's plenty of time on the clock. You can die if the clock runs out. And this guy, let's see if I can fireball him. Yep, you can kill the, the boom booms in the fortress with fireball as well. So that's another guy taken out. Anyway, that's the canoe down there. Oh, we've got another... Sweet, we've got another card game. And we got a fresh card game. Uh, first couple guesses are usually... Now there's usually... Oh, wow. There's usually a star in that one. But at least we can pick up the mushroom. I have no idea where this is. There's usually a star in the top right on most of the boards. Look at this. I'm getting pretty close to full here. I've got three... I've got almost three full rows of inventory. And I think you get only three in this game. Okay, this game, this is 3-8. This level is the next level with the guy who eats you in one gulp. This is a tricky level because the water goes up and down so far. What you need to do is kick the Koopa Troopa turtle shell and climb up top here under the vine. There is a fire flower in that block right there, but uh, in the note block. There we go, managed to kill him. So uh, well, get, get, get that flower, here we go. All right, there's 10 coins in here. Let's grab these. By the way, this is a white mushroom house level, so if I can get all the coins, then I will get a white mushroom house for this. We will find out. There's a vine in here too, so let's get up there where it is safer and then try to firebomb that uh, that cheap, cheap guy or whatever he's called, Big Bertha guy or what, whatever he is. I'm trying to kill him when he respawns, but I don't think I was able to get him there. Up, oh, come on, another vine. This is a, I really like the design of these levels. Like this is just a really creative um, creative way to set up a level. 
Of course, it's not nearly as much fun if the guy eats you. Well, that was a pretty good shot. Let's hurry here, get through this area before he comes back. This is a little risky going down here, but with firepower, it's not too bad. If you don't have fireballs, it's insanely risky to try doing this. Wow. Okay. I guess it wasn't quite as close as it looked. Anyway, though, you come down here, you get the P-Switch, get all the coins. There's a one-up in there, which you can't get unless you go down there and get the P-Switch. It's much safer just to take the top route, but I got all the coins in the level, so that should be a white mushroom house. And uh, since this is an odd-numbered world, that would be another P-Wing. Should pop up. Yay, White Mushroom House. I'm going to use that to get rid of it. And I'm going to use a star to get rid of it. And another star. All right. Clearing out inventory space. So, yes, I am the invincible Mario in the White Mushroom House. Let's flip. Oh, I should have flipped down there. Oh, your, your fireballs are green in the White Mushroom House. The normal mushroom houses, too. The normal toad houses. I don't know why that is. It must be something with the palette that they're using. But, yeah, your mushrooms, your fireballs are green in the, in the mushroom houses. I do want to save one star. Even though invincibility is not that useful. It's sometimes good against the Hammer Brothers. All right. Last level in this world, 3-9. Keep going here. This is, uh, this level is not too challenging. This level is a little strange. Uh, I'd like to get up above the gun that's shooting at me. Nope, didn't pull it off. Uh, notice a little mini Goomba on me. They prevent you from jumping real high. You can barely jump at all. See the white mushroom? See the uh, that white block there? People know about uh, how in World 1-3 you can kneel down on the white block and you can go behind the scenery. But what people don't know is you can actually do that for every white block in the game. So if I wanted to, I could go back there and I could actually get behind the scenery in this level too. It doesn't really do anything. Just kind of looks weird but anytime there's a white block you can always go behind the scenery you just kneel down on it for five seconds and you go behind the scenery these ice blocks you can pick up and throw i think it's kind of a hearkening back to the original mario brothers oh and you can take one down the pipe see <laughs> i always like that take one down the pipe with you not that it does that much but you can take it with you uh, i think that's a hearkening back to the original mario brothers not super mario brothers the original mario brothers where you would uh you know, kick the enemies in that, that game on the pipes. But in any case, that's a fairly standard level. Nothing too spectacular. Just uh, smooth and easy. And I'm not going to go back for the canoe now. Maybe if I was next to it. Sorry, you'll have to watch another playthrough if you haven't seen the canoe. So all the way over here is the castle. And this guy's been turned into, um, I think, one of the spike enemies. I think. I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to be, but I think he's one of the uh, those spike enemies that we saw earlier in this world. I believe so, anyway. Okay, well, this uh, this this airship isn't too bad either, if I remember correctly. It's the first time I think they introduced the flames. It's either this one or the World Four airship is the first one they introduced the flames on. This one you can get a um, a mush a raccoon leaf on if you do it correctly. It looks like you can go over the top there, but you can't. All right, so I want to get this block. I believe there's a raccoon tail in here. Yes, I do remember correctly. Here, I'd love to get up on top of that thing, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. Nope. Oh, well, that's a shame. This shouldn't have gotten hit by that. Yeah, this is the first one that introduces the flames. There's a lot of flames later on, on the later airships. I should not have gotten hit back there. No, oh, that, that spinning thing, you have to keep jumping on it in order to advance. Now watch right this. You can actually go over the top of that obstacle, and it makes this much easier. Because otherwise, these little guys are throwing uh, wrenches at you the whole time, and it's a little bit more difficult to do that section. But see, not too challenging. Okay, Wendy Koopa, she throws these rings at you, and they bounce around. But at least the arena is flat. See how the floor is flat here? Makes it a little bit simpler. Uh-oh, this is trouble. I got to kill her while I'm still invincible. Oh, no. Oh no, okay. <laughs> that was scary. I shouldn't have been so aggressive. Anyway, Wee Man gets it done once again at the end of World 3. Whew, okay. So, so far, so good. Anyway, I think I'm going to have to break this into two parts because this video is going for so long. So, we'll keep going, but we'll pick it up in World 4. I'm just going to keep playing, but I'm going to divide it into two parts. By the way, check out the Mario King. Looks exactly like me. Pretty sweet. Love the Mario King. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching, and we'll continue with part two next time.